Hi, I'm June. Welcome back to my Geeked Out practice session. I'm actually surprised you're here because if you saw my last one, I told you that you'd probably be bored out of your mind. So if you're here today after seeing that one, congratulations, because this isn't any different. <laughs> Practices aren't very glamorous and entertaining. It's entertaining to me. I love it. I know a lot of people don't like to practice. But I know a lot of the reasons why. One is you do have to have a passion for the game or whatever you do. That's why I encourage people to have a passion. It may not be golf. It could be something else. Um, and it'll help you get through the difficulties. But also, I discovered over teaching that people who don't like to practice end up loving it. I don't ever tell anyone to go practice actually helped a lot of people um, enjoy it for themselves because when you start doing the right things, you get rewarded for it for doing them. And as you overcome bad habits, you have more good shots and it's like, oh wow, it feels good. I like starting off with um, just a slow motion swing. Sometimes I start off with a half swing. Sometimes I start off with a full swing. I don't do a lot of stretching. I used to because I was told, you know, that's important. But over time, I discovered, you know, a, a good way to stretch. So maybe one day I'll show you. It's really basic. But a lot of it is just the swing itself. If you can go and do a few swings, uh, just gently uh, initially that it stretches everything if you're doing the right thing if you're learning the one swing that i teach it just your whole body is activated and so just moving and doing the swing itself is a great stretch so i'm doing a slow motion half swing right now it's one way that i warm up I was looking at a golf ball with a logo on it, and I'll show you a photo with it later. I end up hitting it with my driver, but um, I wanted to save it to take a photo of it because I like really neat looking logos. A lot of times I see people doing um, stretches like where they grab two clubs and they just swing it around their arms and stuff, and I'm like, wow, they're, that's doing more damage to your body. Uh, so what I'd like you to do is just kind of take it easy when you're stretching. Just these little easy swings. I do it to kind of warm up my body, but I also like to be more methodical in these kind of practices. Sometimes I warm up with a full swing, so it's not always the same thing that I do. But this one is very similar to the one you saw me practice on a mat. I think it's a great representation because a lot of people, golfers, have this misconception about mats. So I'm gonna to talk to you in depth about it because it can really keep you from having good practice sessions. Um, so I'm gonna talk about mats and the difference between mats and hitting off grass. But um, right now I've got my 50 degree gap wedge. You see right there that it's really soft sand. Um, there's different types of ranges and different types of grass. Um, a lot of driving ranges when there's grass, you hit from and you'll create a divot. And so a chunk of the ground will fly out. But in this case, it's really soft. So you can really chunky monkey it I call it the chunky monkey. It's like a chunky shot, like a fat shot where you hit behind the ball. Um, it's easy to do that with this type of lie. And this is why I wanted to show this video because it's kind of as tough as it can get in terms of driving ranges. Normally it has better grass. Um, this has a lot of weeds. It's actually can be dangerous, I've hit golf balls in so many different conditions, so I am fully aware of what this is like. I discovered quickly as I was hitting shots that you have to be careful because 
Um, I can't practice the way I normally do, where if it's grass, I can hit a golf ball and then create a divot, hit another one right behind the divot, and do that pattern and create a bacon strip. Then I can start over above that and then create another line. So then it ends up becoming a box and sometimes I hit off the hard pan um, once it's a box or I just keep continuing to make um, more divots and a, a bigger box. When you do that and you don't just create a divot in one spot and then move on to another and another and there's just like divots sort of like an island of its own instead of creating it where it's connected is that when it's connected it's easier for the greenskeeper to uh, replenish the driving range for them to seed it rather than having it just one divot here and there and everywhere <laughs> so um, this case I started off that way quickly finding out that it's got a lot of weeds with roots, <laughs> like heavy roots. And I've practiced in this condition a lot, even growing up in Texas. I mean, I've hit off everything you can imagine, like dirt paths and cow pastures, you name it. Just give me a spot to hit golf balls and I'm happy. I was never picky about where like what kind of driving range conditions, which I found out that's not normal. A lot of people go to the range and they start to criticize the conditions of it. And I never really did. In this case, I had to be careful. So I started kind of moving around to make sure, but I still wasn't careful enough. You'll see later that I hit a root and um, it can be really dangerous. My goal was to fine tune my takeaway, but also the shapes of shots that I was doing is more of a high draw, a power fade, and then just more of just a straight kind of shot. The last practice session was just high draws. In this practice, I focused on more of my takeaway, so I was really deliberate throughout the entire practice with my takeaway because takeaway has many levels to it. That's another reason I like fundamentals. It's like 101 reasons why I like fundamentals. One of them is that you keep going back to them and as you learn it, and get through bad habits and then get to, you know, sort of get to a place where it feels repeatable. Over time, you can continue to fine tune your fundamentals. And it's this beautiful path that is focused. Um, you just keep refining and fine tuning. There are other practices, maybe I'll show at some point, where um, I shape shots or I do like really high floppy shots to low pitch shots with my 62 degree wedge. So I like um, do the opposite and, and it's more of a creative practice. A good part of my relationship with my husband Adam is um, we enjoy activities together, but there's some activities I like more than he does. And then he has activities that he just gets lost in more than I do. So with golf, he's already hitting his driver by the time I'm just warming up my gap wedge. <laughs> so it makes me happy because he ends up leaving half the bucket of balls for me. So by the time I'm warmed up, he's already on the cart watching a movie on his cell phone. <laughs> and then it's great because it's just, it's so good. Like I don't ever tell him like, ah, you need to practice. I never tell my students, I don't tell anybody. Because I love it so much and I know that we all have our different things and passion that I would never tell anybody to practice. It's something that I would say, you know what, if you have high expectations and you want to like take it to so many different levels, yeah, you, you gotta put in the time. I would say that, you've gotta meet your expectations. 
but it's not for everyone. And also like, I love that. It, to me, I'm glad that we both don't have the same um, intensity and drive for the game of golf because then we would both be like fighting over each other's golf balls. <laughs> I mean, like, no, you're not touching my basket. <laughs> no, you can't have any of my golf balls. It's a good um, dynamic. And I really encourage over time for couples to, like, enjoy each other's activities if you want. But also, you don't have to be as intense as the other one and allow them to be really into it and get lost in it. Because um, I do that with him. Like, there's some things that he's more into. So for example, first of all, a lot of people think that we have a Jeep because of Adam, because how much he's into it, but it's actually something that I've always loved. Um, I loved it growing up and I still love it now. And it was my idea to get a Jeep. <laughs> so um, I love off-roading and things like that, but he takes it to a whole nother level. And we were literally three hours away from Tahoe and he drove us 16 hours because we went through so many back roads where like there's no road signs or anything. Like we would take these back roads and there would be a fork in the road and it's like, should we go left or should we go right? And there, you can't ask directions. And so like we just, you know, go down these dirt paths and get lost and, um, and on purpose. I mean, we, we would go down another um, back road and he loves that like he gets lost in it and I, I think it's great so I think we all have our thing um, and I love um, road trips and things like that so um, it was fine with me my dog that we had back then loved it he jeeped it the whole 16 hours no kidding like he looked out the window the whole time it was so funny actually so he got lost in it that's the root I was talking about and I put my finger up because just kind of analyzed my swing so I wanted to make sure that I told myself that I hit a root if not I would look at it and go hey why did I hit that shot and I would analyze my swing and I'm like no that was a root so I couldn't uh, release the club I love things where people and dogs can get passionate about something and they just can't get enough of it because I know how I feel when I'm hitting golf balls or when I'm teaching. I love it. And so um, I want everybody to have that. That's why you'll see my golf videos, but I'll be like, find something you love, <laughs> you know, and, and also golf. Like you can play it any which way because there's people out there. They're like, you can't play like that. This is real golf and whatever. I'm like, golf is golf. If you're hitting a ball and you want to play it one way, um, I mean, I used to play cross country with my friends where if there's nobody on the golf course, we would just go from a tee box to a green way over, like three fairways over. And then we'd go backwards, like we'd tee off from the side of the green and then go find um, a landing area somewhere. It's like our goal was the tee box, you know, it'd just be backwards. You know, it's like those kind of things are fun. And so you can play golf any which way. What I love about proper fundamentals is that it will get you through the bad motion and habits. So it's something that you can use to get out of bad habits. And then once you can repeat the good motion, then over time, it becomes second nature at the same time, if you want to continue to elevate your game, which you don't have to, you can kind of maintain it. But if you want to continue to elevate your game, then you can refine it, fine tune it. So this practice, that's what I'm doing. I'm refining, fine tuning my takeaway. So a lot of my shots, uh, I'm taking my time and putting it in even a little bit better position. And it just gets more and more fine-tuned to the point that I wouldn't teach this fine-tuned motion to somebody that is just learning the takeaway or at a different level of the takeaway. 
it's something that I'm fully aware of when you're there to learn this part of it, I can meet you there. What I find is majority of the golfers need to wrap their mind around the fact that a takeaway is important. And then when you figure it out and then you have the guidance of doing it properly, that's the key too, is a lot of people don't like practice because they're busy getting gimmicky tips everywhere. And so then they apply it a couple times and then they move on because it's not working. Even a good solid lesson still requires repetition and patience and perseverance and all that good stuff. That's why I don't like gimmicky tips because if people knew, and now you're gonna understand after watching this, that it takes reps. So even if it's gimmicky or if it's a bad tip, it still requires reps. So why not try to seek the right information and then apply it because both tips, good or bad, takes time for it to get ingrained. So there really isn't really a quick tip. It's just the perception of it. It's like, oh, that, that's great, that's easy, I can do that. It's the same combination of clubs that I used in the previous video. So I used various combinations and different practices, but in this case, to keep it consistent with hitting off a mat, to show that, you know what, good shots off of mats show up and good shots off of like a dirt path <laughs> with weeds and roots and stuff like that. So it, it's as tough as a lie can get um, at a range usually. I mean, I've, you know, it, it can get worse, I guess, but, um, usually, typically, um, ranges have it where you hit shots and you'll get a divot out of it and not splattered sand. You don't want to have these ridiculous perceptions of mats because it's going to prevent golfers from, one, practicing on them, thinking they're bad. The other one is thinking that mats cause injuries, which is so false. Um, it actually can cause, if anything, more injuries hitting off the ground or grass because of the various parts of nature. So, for example, in this video, I end up hitting a root and I can easily hurt my wrist and I felt some pain from that. Um, I've hit lots of roots before, so it's part of practicing off of ground or just playing golf. So you can get injuries that way. The other one is uh, things that splatter on your face. So when you have practiced and played golf in different weather conditions and also different textures of ground. So it started raining during this session and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get my face covered in mud because <laughs> That can easily happen. So if you hit it heavy at all, it can just splatter on your face. Also, you can get little pebbles and have them shoot into your eye. And that's happened many times. It just is part of the initiation of <laughs> being an avid golfer. If you haven't experienced those, you haven't hit enough golf balls <laughs> and played long enough because you're gonna get mud in your face, pebbles in your eyes, um, you know, hitting into a root. The driver that I'm hitting is over five years old. I love technology, I love good clubs, but at the same time, I'm not always feeling like that's what needs to change for me to take it to the next level. I've gotten even more accuracy and more distance, and I haven't switched clubs. I've just been working on my swing and just fine tuning it and, and doing it in a fun way. Cause I know it seems like I'm just like 
focused and serious when I'm hitting, but I'm really not. I'm, I am focused. Like I'm not checking my phone or, you know, stopping in between. I just kind of like keep hitting. I just get in my zone. It's more of a moving meditation for me. And it's not something that is like, oh, I've got to hit these shots. I've got to get somewhere so that I can feel good about myself. Like, it's not that. <laughs> because the reason I know that is because when I do think back to all the rounds of golf that I played with so many different types of people and pros and I mean, you name it. I mean, it's just like celebrities and just random people you're, you know, put on the course with. And the stupidest things come into your mind that has nothing to do with a perfect shot or whatever. I mean, yes, it feels great. Like there is no better feeling than a pure golf shot for me. <laughs> and I know for a lot of people, once they feel it, they're like, oh my gosh. I go, yep, you hit a marshmallow shot because they didn't feel a thing. It's a great feeling. But the things that come to my mind are the silliest things. Like when I was playing golf with my brother growing up and there's a sprinkler and it was broken. So it's shooting like really low. And so we're in a cart, he's driving. I'm on the right side of the cart and the sprinkler's facing the cart path and it's low. So you know what? going to happen next and he starts laughing and he drives through it and I'm like ah <laughs> and just got soaked and he was just laughing I was thinking the other day um, some of the funniest rounds like there's these guys um, at the time I was younger and um, they were retired and we play golf and one of the guys would be like oh there comes the flat bellies you know, they call this the flat bellies, and then we'd play, and I'm always eating, right? So I'm in the cart, and I'm just chowing down, and he walk by and goes, oh, you're feeding your tapeworm again. My husband, Adam, and I will do putting contests after we practice, and when he starts to beat me, he um, talks in third person. So he'll be like, oh, champ's back again. Trash talk me in third person. He's like, oh, champ's got the challenger. And he calls me the challenger. And um, so it's like, I think of that. I don't think of like the pure putt that I made or whatever. It's like silly things like that. And um, one time I was like, okay, if I win this one, you're gonna call me the goat. He makes these rules up as we go along. So he's like, well, I'll call you the goat, but only on the putting green, only on the golf course. Because once we're off the golf course, I'm not calling you the goat. And I'm like, what? You call yourself the champ everywhere. <laughs> and it's just silly things like that, that I really feel like is what stays with you. So me trying to hit better shots and improving my swing to, you know, feel that pureness, it's nothing in relative to the, the precious memories of these silly moments that you have on the golf course with your friends and family. Um, nothing beats that. So um, keep it real, you know, continue to improve. I think it's a great thing. It's beyond the game of golf. You're actually becoming more body aware. Um, also having a better mindset and being able to Get to know your emotions, let it flow through you, and learn to balance that. Mind, energy, body, emotions. And so to me, it's like a moving meditation. Usually at some point during my practice session, I have Adam take my phone and video my swing so I can watch it on our drive home. So it's easily accessible. So I had him, um, video my swing, but he had an idea to put three golf balls, tee them up, and then he can video me from three different angles for a video short on YouTube. And I thought it was a great idea. I mean, that's how our videos come about. And it's really neat because the video camera that was videoing my practice 
kind of video that whole scenario. So you get to see the behind the scenes of how something comes about and it's always like this. It's like so nonchalant, um, random, but to the point where it's like, you know what, this is good. You know, we can share um, an experience of, of the practice and the swing. And it's, it's really how that happens. And also like the teaching ones that I've done even in the past, um, it's all like that. That's how it comes about. We don't write down like what's going to happen, what we're going to say, what I'm going to say, how it's going to be videoed. It's not anything like that. But I really think that when you do something that you're passionate about and you know a lot about it, you don't have to rehearse it. And so all these videos, when I talk, like I don't rehearse it, <laughs> you know, and um, it's just the way it is. And I love that you can see that. Golf is great because it really tests you. It's something about golf, it has this outcome. It's not just form and then sitting down to sort through your thoughts, process them and become more aware of it. It has movement and then it has action reaction and then it just ties in your emotions and your body and everything, just thoughts. And so I feel like it's a great Thing for everyone if they end up enjoying it because it's a true test to see like you know do you really have that balance and who really does it's just us continuing to better ourselves so for for anyone who plays golf or sports or anything in life to know that you are already complete you are already good, that anything outside of that that you try to get better, it just um, brings out even more of that. So it's not that you need to get somewhere to then suddenly be happy or joyous. It's just you are already. And then you then get to express it. Really, I mean, I really think that's what it is. I'm not trying to get so good to one day enjoy it. I enjoy it now, and I enjoyed it back then. I hope in some way you have been inspired through this video and previous videos. We'll highlight in these videos over time as you watch them that, you know, it's gonna be rough around the edges. I'm rough around the edges, and um, our life is rough around the edges. It's just, um, just the way it is. I hope we can continue to stay in touch. All right, take care. Peace.